Well, hello there, Virgo. How are you? It is so good to see you again. I'm Mary Sue, and I'm so grateful that you're here. So today we are doing your um, June general tarot reading. So we'll take a look at the overall energies with the oracle cards, and then we'll move to the tarot for more details about any obstacles on your path or advice that Spirit has for you. And if you're enjoying the content that I create, I'd really appreciate it if you would consider liking, commenting, or subscribing. I really do appreciate all of your support. Okay, so let's see what we have here. Align spirit, be generous of spirit, and navigating by the stars, follow your bliss. Okay, so it really is about stepping into the energy of doing those things that bring you joy, right? That bring you this bliss. <laughs> the energy of understanding that when you are doing those things that bring you the most joy and you're doing them in a loving way that the pathway will open for you of the correct modality, I guess you might say, of how to share it. So it's kind of like if, you know, if you um, are creative and you love to create something, uh, understanding that when you are in that moment of creating, uh, of being in your bliss, okay? You have a better connection to spirit. And in that moment, you will also understand, if you listen carefully, you'll understand the way forward. Um, because I feel like navigating by the stars, you may feel like you're in the dark at this time. And the reason that you're perhaps in the dark is because you're listening too much to the 3D, <laughs> to the external that is around you instead of listening to your own to your own guidance within you. You could be even allowing your mind, your ego to come in and um, almost like deter you from the, the path that is right for you. Kind of interesting because I feel as if, you know, it's kind of like, I, it's almost as if the thing that they're showing me is there, there was this one time I went hiking and I was with some other people and we, we hiked to the top of a mountain in order to watch a sunrise, right? And it was spectacular, right? And what we didn't take into account was how long it was going to take us to get back down the mountain, back to our car. Um, and that even though <laughs> there was a moon that night, even though it was a clear evening, right? That we were walking, the top of the mountain had no trees, but we had to walk through trees or a forested path in order to get back to the car. And we didn't have flashlights. <laughs> I mean, when I think about it, it was just like, really? <laughs> but <laughs> we were young. Um, and I remember how scared I was because we could not even see the path. It was kind of like a graveled path. So it was a clear path, okay? It was a clear path, just like here, right? there. And it was a clear path, but we couldn't see the path. And I remember just being fearful, right? Just like grasping at anything, uh, any bit of light that came onto the path. You know, I remember there was this like little puddle and, and I could see like moonlight hitting that puddle or something like that. And I was like, oh my goodness, there's a puddle. And just kind of like l lunging f towards the puddle because it was a spot of light that I could see. Instead, Okay, if, and I am going to speak only for myself, that my fears about the situation, about what animals might be lurking in the dark and would we ever, you know, find the car again? And, you know, we were actually not that far from civilization, <laughs> but it was just this energy of, oh my goodness, how, how, how did I get myself in this position? I feel like you're a little bit in that type of energy of being in the dark, but also allowing your fears to kind of like sweep you away from just being calm and listening, okay, to your own intuition and not listening to the fears. 
Um, so it's that type of energy of understanding that I feel like your, your ego may be kind of coming in whether you recognize it or not, because you kind of, it's almost like you may feel like you painted yourself into a corner and you don't know how to get out of it, or you've gotten yourself into something kind of deep, but you're not really sure, is this the right path for me? How do I move forward? So it's you know, being generous of spirit, but being generous of spirit to yourself, of tapping into that, um, that insight, that light that you have inside of you, knowing that the path is still there. I mean, when I was walking down that mountain, I was like, are we still on the path? You know, <laughs> I was the one freaking out. Some people were freaking out. Other people were not quite so freaking out at, or they didn't admit to it until we got back to the car. And then everybody was like, it's kind of interesting because some people acted very calm. But when we got back to the car, they kind of lost it. Oh my goodness. <laughs> and I feel like, you know, you could either be trying to stay calm in the midst of all this, but still you have that anxiety done inside of you. Or you could be like me. That was just kind of like, oh my goodness, you know, the whole entire time. Okay, this is going somewhere wonderful. That is what you need to know. It's almost over, okay? Yeah, take control of your thoughts. I feel as if there's almost this energy where you are allowing your fears of being in the dark, right? Um, to overtake the, the situation. The path is there. You're on the right path. It, it's almost as if you are... are um, and I totally get it <laughs> from that experience. It's almost as if you're you're just kind of like listening. Like for me, I was listening. Is there going to be a bear? Because we were in bear country. Is there going to be a bear that's going to jump out and eat me? You know, <laughs> it's just like you know, it's just kind of like okay, calm down and uh, let's let's see what we have to work with, right? Let's let's take a moment. I did take this class once and it said that if you ever got lost in the woods, and I actually did after that, and I did use this trick, was to stop and hug a tree. Like, don't move, just go find a tree, wrap your arms around it, and just lean into it, hug the tree, right? Um, and I, you know, I feel like that's kind of what it is here. It's kind of like wrapping yourself around a tree, grounding yourself, right? Coming back to you, coming back to what you know to be true instead of allowing the fears. Yeah, because you have the answers are coming. And I think that they are coming very shortly. The consciousness of lack, I think you feel like <clears throat> you've gotten yourself into a situation. I feel like this could be like a work, career situation, financial situation. You've gotten yourself into this and now it's kind of like, how am I going to get myself out of here? Five of Wands, you're, you're just kind of like, your fears are, uh, are, are, are fueling your actions, okay? Instead of your inner guidance system. You're allowing your fears to, to guide you. And when we get into those situations, it is very easy to allow our fears, right? We're grasping. It's almost that energy of grasping at straws. I got to get something to work here, right? You could be at the end of, you know, kind of a situation where money is running out, like you're trying to get something to work, like a, a launch of a website or something like that. You're trying to get something to work and you're running out of time. You're running out of money. You're you're almost getting into that desperate energy. It's about taking a break, right? And allowing the fears to dissipate and grounding yourself, going and hugging a tree. <laughs> Give it a break. Give it a try. Or if you have somebody in your life that's supportive, you know, saying, I need a hug. <laughs> I just need a hug. Um, because sometimes we do. You know, when I was a teacher and I taught fourth grade, you know, sometimes we just need a hug. Sometimes we just need to know it's going to be okay. Yeah, because your dark thoughts are literally, okay, um, are, are, taking your actions or driving your actions instead of seeing okay the the goodness in the situation seeing the blessings the silver lining of the black cloud and understanding okay i'm going to focus on that i'm going to focus on what i can see instead of 
the fears of what lurks in the dark. Yeah. Balance is spirituality and practicality. I think you've been thrown into a situation where perhaps money or time is running out. That's the practical thing, right? And it's so your focus is on that instead of saying, okay, I'm going to go back to my source. I'm going to go back to the divine. I'm going to go back to my higher self in order to find the guidance that I need in this situation. Yeah, your vibration is rising. When you allow yourself to kind of step into, okay, you know, you are the hermit, you know, you have that lantern of light, you have the light within you, you have the wisdom and the knowledge within you about how to move forward. Um, so allowing your fears to kind of dissipate so that you can see clearly, intuitively how to move forward. Um, all right, so let's take a look at your obstacle. Yeah, you're trying to move forward in your work sector, money sector, because we have the eight of pentacles. There's some movement you are wanting to make, you know, whether that's a change in a job, change in a career, launching something new, you know, you're trying to make some type of a move in your career and money sector. Um, and communication is key and be a light to others in this situation, okay? It is about perhaps shining your light as brightly as you can, knowing that you have this light within you, that it's time to share it with other people. Not to fear. I think you're getting, getting a little bit bogged down about the practical side of this instead of saying, okay, I know my spirit guides and angels, the universe, the divine is behind me. When we share our love and light in a loving way, things will work out <laughs> and just stepping into that. It could be because Virgo, you can sometimes tend to be, um, you know, look at this. You have the sun card on the bottom. Love that. Um, you can tend to fall into a sense of perfectionism, right? Of understanding you don't have to be perfect in this situation that the divine that is behind you, the universe is behind you. It's about stepping into that energy of I'm going to give this my best try, <laughs> right? I'm not going to work uh, worry about, is it perfect? You know, is it going to be accepted? Is it, you know, I think you're asking questions and, and trying to find those answers about how this is going to work out. It's about understanding, yeah, dropping the burdens, dropping the burdens of, of how the actual outcome, just knowing, okay, I'm just going to focus on putting myself my love, my light into this situation, whatever it is, putting my, my love and light into it, getting back into your heart center, allowing your fears to kind of dissipate, um, bring your energy back into your heart will help to raise your vibration, right? And then you are going to be prosperous. You're going to be recognized. This is going to bring you your back, bring you back into your power, but it's also going to bring you the financial stability and security that you are looking for in this situation. Once you drop the burdens of having it to look a certain way or feel like I, I have to do it a certain way, understanding that you are being navigated, okay, when you allow your fears to kind of Allow your fears to dissipate. Yeah, your fears are preventing you from stepping into your true purpose, into stepping into the, the work that you are meant to share with others, right? It's about having the courage to say, okay, I'm putting it out there. Can you tweak it later? Yes. Okay, can you change it up a little bit? Yes. Knowing that the path to... Um, to your success, it may be curvy. See, look at that path. It zigs and zags back and forth. It's not a straight line. I think you're almost wanting a straight shot at it. It's kind of like allowing yourself to understand that you can tweak and turn this around once you get it started. It's about putting it out there. I feel like some of you are holding back on something. Yeah, it's almost as if you don't want to to step onto this path, fully step onto this path. And when I say that, I mean, I think you may have been working on something, but you haven't launched it. You haven't put it out there, right? And the reason is because you want to know it's going to bring you the success that you're looking for. You're fearful that it won't. So you're, you could be even coming up with excuses or reasons why not to do it. 
So let's take a look at your advice. Look at this. You have the four of wands increase. Oh my goodness. This is a happy family, happy home, financial stability, security, celebrating, celebrating this increase, so looking at it through the eyes of knowing that you are putting out <laughs> exactly a part of you. That's why it's so scary. It's a part of you. Perhaps being fearful that other people will judge it, right? Because we have the judgment card here. Or we did. <laughs> here it is. We have the judgment card. Being afraid of how other people will judge it, right? Will scrutinize it. Will say, is this, is this, oh, that's not very good, right? So you're allowing that to block you. It's about putting down that burden of understanding. Listen, I'm putting this out in my most loving way. There, there's nothing more beautiful than that, right? You know, it's not necessarily, say you're trying to launch a website, it's not necessarily the color theme or the fonts or, or whatever. It's kind of like, what is the content? Uh, what is your what is your joy on those pages <laughs> on your website? Is your joy, is your love, is your light? Is the content uh, a reflection of you, of who you want to be? Be a light to others, shining your truth, sharing your wisdom. Is that what it is? Or are you getting caught up in the details of, oh my goodness, what are people going to think? Should I use red type text or should I use yellow text or blue text? You, you could spend days <laughs> on that. It's about understanding. Okay, going back to my to your heart, what color do you like the most? Don't worry about what other people are going to want. Think about it in your in your aspect. Go back to your heart. What color font do you like the most? Right? What color text, I guess, <laughs> do you like the most? Right? Oh, you like the red? Then go with the red. Don't worry so much about how other people perceive it. Ask yourself what it is that you have to share, okay? And then share it in your way. You will attract in those people that are meant to see what it is that you are putting out there to the world. Yeah, because deeper insights are at hand. Your overall plan is good, but the details need work. That is what, <laughs> that is exactly where the deeper insights is actually that you are kind of bogged down in the details, right? You are bogged down in the details. You're like churning it over and over. It's kind of like, see the big picture. Is the big picture a reflection of you and what you have to share with others? It is? Okay, go forward. You know, launch it because a new start is coming. Yeah, when, once you realize that it's a, it, uh, overcoming perhaps the judgment of others, what other people are going to think, um, how they're going to perceive it, how they may scrutinize it. You're not going to make everybody happy. If that's your goal, to make everybody like what you put out there, uh, or to bring in a certain dollar amount or something like that, let go of that. Allow yourself to let go of that burden and just get back into the joy, the love of what it is that you want. Yes. Oh my goodness. Yeah, This I feel like this really has something to do with your money sector. Um, it's been a long time, right? You've been kind of like working on this or thinking about it for a long time. It's about bringing balance into the situation, knowing that it's not all about the tangible side of it, right? It is also about <laughs> the Empress. I love this, right? Because I feel like you have the Emperor, right? And this was in your obstacle. You're all, you're, you're kind of set on the, the 3D version of it, okay? The Emperor is very much 3D oriented, do, 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 right? The Empress is much more the creative, the allowing, the divine feminine energy of, you know, understanding that it's not necessarily about do, do, do. It's also about shining your loving, nurturing self with others, knowing that it's more, I'm just going to say, I feel like it's more about the content of what you are trying to share with others, the wisdom that you are trying to share with others, your insight that you are trying to share with others, your creativity that you are trying to share with others. That is a, more important than you could be getting bogged down with like the business plan details or, you know, once again, you know, what font you're using or that type of thing, you know.
when I taught fourth grade, <laughs> they would want to play with the font. Say we were working, you know, they were typing up something, you know, on the computer and, you know, they would want to try every single font and, you know, different colors and all of that. And I, uh, you know, as a teacher, I would say, I would give them, uh, and believe me, they spent a lot, they, they could spend the whole day just choosing their font and the color of the text, right? And I would say, okay, you have four minutes. I would give them four minutes <laughs> because I guess they were in fourth grade. You have four minutes, okay, to figure out your font and color. And then we're moving forward. And I would give them that time because that is part of the creativity process. But you can't just go down that hole, that rabbit hole for so long, you know? If you get everything else done, right? You spend four minutes on the color of your text and your font and then move on to what it is. You know, the content is much more important than the color of the font or the, uh, you know, the, the color of the text or the font that you choose. The content is much more important. So it is a little bit of, okay, if it makes you feel better, spend four minutes working on those details and then get back to what it is that you are trying to share with others because it really and truly does bring you the sense of the Ten of Cups. It gives you this new inspiration when you're like, it, okay, I'm not going to get bogged down in the details or what other people are going to think about what I'm creating. I'm just gonna create. I'm gonna get back into my Empress energy and just create, create out of the love and the light that you have and sharing your insight, your wisdom, <laughs> your creativity with others. All right, let's pull the soul truth card for you. And Virgo, I do do personal readings, so if you're interested, the link is in the description box below. I'd really be honored to do a reading for you. How can I infuse more self-love and compassion into my daily life? Yeah, the, the biggest thing here, if your compassion does not include yourself, it is incomplete. That's a Buddha quote. But, and there's 10 things there that you can do. The biggest thing, okay, is, you know, speak to yourself with compassion. You know, not allowing yourself to be so concerned about the judgments of others or how other people will perceive it. Because then you're not putting out your true authentic self. It's about stepping into knowing that your light and love will be cherished when you share it authentically in your own way. All right, I'm going to leave it there, Virgo. I do wish you so much love and light in this situation and all your situations. And I hope to see you again really soon. Bye for now.